We're here to talk about the Operation Paddle Smart program, which is an educational program put out by the U.S. Coast Guard and the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary to kind of keep paddlers aware of changes uh, with paddle craft, so kayaks, canoes, and stand-up paddle boards. And the whole program is really focused on education, and there's several components to education. One of them is the Paddle Sports America course, which is actually put on by the American Canoe Association, so the U.S. Coast Guard works with them in presenting this course to the boating public. Um, it's an integrated course, and the American Canoe Association does on-the-water parts of it, and we do in, cl in the classroom. So educating boaters about paddlecraft is a huge component of our entire watercraft program. And uh, we'll tell you at the end of this uh, video exactly where you can uh, reach information on this course. We also have a kids course called Sidekicks. Talks about navigation rules and paddling rules, um, which is associated with uh, paddle sports. So part of the program and recognition that we're trying to uh, talk about today are the difficulty that we have in identifying paddlecraft. And one of the problems we have with, with watercraft like this is that they're not required to be registered in the state of Michigan. So they don't carry the normal in Michigan MC number that would appear on the bow. And some boats built after 1972 do carry a HIN number or a hull identification number. And those numbers are located back at the port starboard side of the stern and usually embossed right in the plastic or fiberglass. But they're really hard to see. It's not something you can certainly see from a distance. So we have a, a real problem in identifying kayaks in particular that um, might show up on the water that don't have a pilot behind them. And that's a concern both for the kayak owner and for the Coast Guard. Because if we can't determine who the pilot is or if there was a pilot associated with that craft, will automatically launch a search and rescue mission, um, which can involve multiple forces, aircraft, fixed wing, and helicopters, um, assuming that someone was actually inadvertently tossed into the water and could have, could have drowned or, or be drowning. So the Coast Guard and uh, paddlers integrated or initiated a paddlecraft identification program, and it's called the If Found Contact program. And this program allows decals or stickers to be placed inside the paddlecraft so that if these vessels are found floating around, we can identify that they A, belong to somebody, that there's a way to contact who they belong to, and B, that we can make a phone call so that we don't have to launch a search and rescue investigation um, because it may not be necessary at all. So they're real simple. They're made out of a really high, highly durable kind of a vinyl plastic material. And there's a place for your name your phone number, actually a couple of phone numbers. We're recommending that you put your, your web address or your email address on one of the lines. So again, you could be notified immediately should this vessel show up. And their indelible ink is used, a indelible marker, to go ahead and put your name on these decals. And then they're affixed after removing the back portion to the inside port section of the kayak just below the rail or what would be a gunnel on most boards. So if you turn this, they're placed in this location. And what that does is it doesn't put any identification marks on the outside of the craft, which might be kind of a, an infringement of your, um, your personal rights. You might not want your address displayed on the outside of or your phone number of a vessel. But it does get it in a position that we know to look for should we come across one of these vessels. And we can A, return them to you, or B, launch a SAR rescue mission. The paddlecraft decals can be picked up at your local Coast Guard station and or if they're not available there through the local Coast Guard auxiliary. Um, there is a web address that you can access. That would be the 9th Western Region, which is cgaux9wr.com. And I can tell you from personal experience that this has greatly facilitated the search and rescue process, um, which can, again, involve multiple people. And we're able to return these vessels back to their owners in a very short matter. So thanks for joining us today.